Hey guys, your pal Victor here from Cult Classics, and hey, we just watched episode two of the second series of Motherland Fort Salem. It's called Abomination, and our review starts right now. So this episode pretty much picks off where a little bit after the end of the last episode and most of what this episode is about is kind of laying the groundwork for the girls like new spot in war college kind of think about it as like a, kind of like a harry potter movie where like you know harry goes back to hogwarts and dumbledore's laying like the new rules of the of the land you know whatever the ministry's cocked up this time and who the new um, you know, uh, defense of the dark arts teacher is, who the other new teachers are. That's kind of what this episode pretty much felt like. You know, um, uh, Riel, Tally, and Abigail are starting war college, uh, and we get a speech from the commander of their new unit, uh, Sekhmet, or their new coven, Sekhmet. Um, and then we learn all the units are named after war goddesses. And the leader of the new of their new coven is named M, who's kind of like this like badass sort of like uh, shaved head uh, hot chick who clearly has a, has a, her eye on Rael. So I'm I'm predicting we're gonna see her as like uh, the new love interest for the season, kind of replacing Scylla. <clears throat> but as the episode goes on, we meet some of their. Um, other teachers, uh, uh, you know, there's a teacher who's there to teach them mother tongue because you can only kind of do certain workings in mother tongue. Uh, they have basically a defense of the dark arts teacher, but here dark arts are called uh, off canon magic, and I can tell that's kind of going to play a big role this season because off canon magic are what the Camarilla and the Spree use. It's like uh, non-orthodox magic, sort of the thing that, uh, Rail was a little bit ostracized in the first season for using, but we get a glimpse, uh, Marion is the, uh, professor who teaches defense against off-canon magic, it's totally defense of the dark arts, but whatever, um, you know, so she's gonna use it against them, you know, which clearly, uh, you know, Dolores Umbridge would not uh, appreciate whatsoever. Uh, but it's probably a little bit more up in Dumbledore Alley's, you know, sort of way. Or Lupin, maybe Lupin would agree. Anyway, enough Harry Potter. But basically, she's using dark, off-canon magic against them just to show them how powerful it is. You know, she rings a bell and then suddenly they can't vocalize and they put sacks over their head. Feels like a weird Abu Ghraib, like, callback or something. You know, uh, look it up, Google Abu Ghraib. But uh, basically, it's just, uh, you know, when you know, they were torturing, troops are torturing people in a, gra in a you know, in a Kuwaiti pres prison or an Iraqi prison, something like that. Anyhow, as I digress, um, as the episode kicks off, uh, Isadora is testing uh, Abigail and um, Rael uh, together to see if they can mimic the mushroom explosion or something, and they're just not having any luck doing it. And Isadora is convinced she can crack the spell as uh, they go into the uh, my mycelium room, the giant mushroom room, which we know Rael is completely connected to. I mean, she touch that thing now she can do mushroom magic that's all i'm saying um but they bring in a head of one of the camarilla uh people that ground zero and they open it up on a table and the way they do it you could totally tell <laughs> this isn't a knock it's like oh they're opening up the box and the head's in the middle of the table i predict this head will talk you know it's totally like the head's just sticking up out of the desk it's it's kitschy i'm glad they did something practical like this they do a lot of cgi on this show some practical magic is cool too but at one point uh they remove the goggles off this head and the eyes are still moving around for a second and then they, they turn all mushroomed out too uh and we think that's the end of the creepy stuff with the mushroom until uh, Rael is having a conversation with M, and Isadora just happens to be in the same room and realizes that, uh, 
Rail's strong feelings are animating the head and it's speaking with her voice and it's kind of creepy, especially when they do a close up near the end, you see the weird mushroom mouth with broken teeth kind of start moving. Um, and this kind of culminates when Marion does this test when, called the dollhouse test with uh, tallies in there too. And um, basically they have to kind of, you know, they, this is another defense of the dark arts thing, off canon magic, whatever. Uh, you know, find the source of the witchery. So they're in this room and it's kind of throwing them all off because they're being attacked by noises and they don't know what to do. And at one point, there's all these life-size dolls that come alive and start to attack them. Um, you know, and Abigail's can't find it. I mean, she's looking around. Gregorio's in there. He's a new character who's introduced in here as another potential love interest for Abigail. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um... But uh, while this is happening, uh, Tally manages to um, maybe use her connection with General Alder to kind of find the source of the, you know, witch blocker or all the witchery in there. And she's the first person to ever pass the Kobayashi Maru. I mean, the dollhouse test. It's very much a start. Oh, you passed this test and no other freshman can pass. Like, yeah, it's funny. Not knocking it, I'm just saying this episode borrows a lot from a lot of things, you know, and that's cool, I dig it, you know, but, you know, it's a little obvious here. But while this is happening, there's like, there was, you know, Gregory's like, how do we get out of the other room? And Tally's like, there was no other room, and being very Neo, but then suddenly she realizes that, uh, you know, Abigail and uh, Rail are missing, and what happened was Isadora grabbed them because she got approval from General Alder to do some tests on them uh, because Isadora kind of has a theory after the mushroom thing, so she's attacking them in their rooms and she's yelling at uh, Rail that she fucked the mushroom up and she spent her whole career, uh, you know, working on this mushroom and now she's an abomination. So she like cuts her air off and as soon as she does that, she builds a mushroom shield around her. And this is where we find out that, yes, the mushroom magic only comes from Rael, not from Abigail. What's really weird about this scene is uh, we just cut to General Alder and his adore drinking and she's just explaining shit to, um, you know, General Alder. It's kind of like, oh, she put up the shield and then she tells us about Abigail, that Abigail's sad that she doesn't have mushroom magic and you know, you know, Alder shocks up to Bell others wanting to excel. And it's like, I kind of feel like they could have played this up a little bit because Abigail was really into the man, you know, thinking they were part of this mega weapon. And we don't really get much from them. Like Tally and Rail and her have a conversation for a minute. And she just shocks, you know, kind of stiff up her lip. Yeah, well, whatever, you know, it's not that big a deal, which kind of just, she doesn't say that, but that's how it comes off. So it's kind of like, eh, you know, but let's talk a little bit about Abigail and um, Tally's storylines in this episode. Um, so Tally's still, you know, girl crushing on Alder after her Biddy connection. And then what ends up happening is, you know, she's starting to kind of become a little bit friendly uh, with the vice president's daughter. I think her name is Penelope. I just Penelope Silver, I, th I think her name is. Um, I might be wrong, but I know it starts with a P. Um, but they're talking and, uh, Tally wants to kind of mentor her and show her around. And what ends up happening is, as all this talk of off and magic happens, uh, Tally has another PTSD dream where we follow up with the witch in Alder's company from last episode and how she broke that bottle that, uh, the sound inside, like, kind of turned all the, uh, all the Camarilla people against each other and started, they started fighting with each other. It's a very kind of spree thing, you know, it's like the balloon bursting. Uh, and Alder's kind of like, hey, how did you do that? You know, that was off canon, you know? It's like, you could tell the two of them have like a history, like maybe they hooked up at some point, but it kind of feels like a Dumbledore, Grindelwald scenario right now. Like I said, very Harry Potter, but um, this all comes to a head near the end of the episode where Penelope, where, uh, where uh, Tally's showing Penelope around. And what ends up happening is they come to a picture of General Alder's company at this time. And then she's like, do you see that? Someone's using magic to hide someone in this picture. And then she's, you know, be able to kind of see through the magic in this picture, you know, because of her empathy. And it's like, that girl in my dream is real. 
but someone's trying to erase her existence. Like they're using magic to hide this girl in the pic in the picture. And I'm sorry, the very first thing that came to mind is like, why use magic when you have Photoshop? Just Photoshop her out of the picture, man. You don't need magic for everything, you know? It's just one of those things where it's like, it felt a little soap opera, even though like the close up on her afterwards, because she's looking at the painting at the picture like, and then, like, once she kind of sees it, it's, like, blurring in and out. She's like, <gasps> it's, it was very soap opera Um Now, Abigail, I don't know, man. I feel it's two episodes in, so I'm not going to kind of write her off. But I'm, like, really uninterested in Abigail so far this season. Like, her storyline's kind of just, like, she wasn't part of the magic mushroom uh, uh, may mayhem. You know, and we just heard her thoughts on that, not from her directly. And then, you know, uh, uh, Kalani, or Kalan, Kalita, Kalita, that's it, the girl from the Tarim, she tells General Alder that she wants to, like, check out the other countries from the Hague, because the, the UN, or whatever the Hague Commission is visiting, uh, war, for Salem War College, and we find out that Kalita wants to uh, relocate to a different country. And I hate to say it, but, like, I... Dude, they, I'm pretty, most, I would say, this whole season and, like, the last few episodes of season one, they're really riding Kalita like a little bitch. I'm just like, dude, I'm so fucking sick of you. Even, like, Adil says, stop trying to, you know, a few episodes back, he's like, you know, you're, you're proving General Alder right that you're really arrogant and conceited. And I'm like, this little kid, they're not doing her any favors. Her character just comes off very unlikable so far. And they need to do something to prove her right, else it's just coming off, like, really bad. So, like, General Alder offers her protection, and she's kind of like, I don't need protection, you know. And then the other countries in the in the UN are kind of just telling her, you know, we've had the Camarilla attack our borders, too, with, like, their witch plague because it doesn't affect humans. Like, no shit, it doesn't affect humans. I don't think anybody was worried about it affecting humans. We knew it was a witch plague. And General Alder explains to them that it's the Camarilla, Camarilla using voice boxes. And, you know, one of the people from The Hague is like, oh, How dare they? That's blasphemy! And it's just like... I feel like they should know these things. General Alder shouldn't have to be telling them, you know? Like, maybe, maybe, I don't know. That's just my take on it. And uh, in, in the meantime, you know, Adil's still hanging around. He's still into uh, Abigail, but he seems to be hanging out with her friend Gregorio, too. I don't know if that... He, it's just like, a, hey, he's just interested in people who are interested in him, where it's just a friendship thing. I don't know. But it seemed like uh, Abigail and Gregorio might have a thing now, but she still has a thing going on with Adil. It's like, we'll see. We'll, there's a lot more episodes, but this, she just kind of felt like an afterthought in this one. And um, the other big thing going on in this one is, uh, you know, Scylla, you know, Rail's ex. She's still hanging around with uh, with Rail's mom, who's the leader of the spree. And she's telling the story of like, oh, you know, they didn't like who I was mentoring. So they kept me on the field and I never saw my kid grow up. So I grew to hate them. You know, and it's like, okay, cool. So she's kind of using Scylla as her replacement daughter. She tells, Scylla tells Rail's mom, hey, you know, I'm going to uh, continue, you know, trying to infiltrate this uh, anti-witch group because I met a lady who's sad and her husband's a misogynist jerk pretty much. So, you know, she goes to the site of where she did the first balloon bomb, that mall with the Mace, fake Macy's. And she hears a lady's husband speak, and uh, he's kind of, you know, he's like like a neo-Nazi. This is a neo-Nazi thing, just like, yeah, fuck witches kind of deal. And, uh, you know, she's talking to the wife, and she's like, oh, yeah, he's very inspiring. And while they're talking, uh, Anacostia is there, and she's pretending to be someone named Amelia, and uh, she has a little heart-to-heart -heart with Scylla before, kind of like, well, I don't really trust General Alder, but I know that you have remorse and you're trying to kind of like, uh, you know, do good and get into this group because, you know, the Camarilla's back. And they all go out drinking together and the husband's totally being like, uh, women, ooh. you know, you can tell he's a jackass. But, he sh but Anna Kostya and Scylla keep bonding, so we'll see where that goes. And, um... 
that's pretty much the gist of the episode, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the big reveal in this one is the, oh, they're hiding this lady from my dreams in a magic paint, in magic picture that's walking around rather than use Photoshop. But, you know, I, I didn't like this episode as much as the first one, but it's moving the story forward. You know, and I am enjoying Rail. Rail was pretty much the big star in this episode. We know she has the the mushroom powers are her and she's using the power of the mycelium to do it. And she can turn people into pure mycelium and kind of use them as satellites, you know, kind of puppeteer them, which is kind of a freaky power. And now we know what Esprit really wants her. So yeah, we'll see you next week. I'm excited where this episode goes. Anyway, if you enjoyed this review, Feel free to like and subscribe, ring the bell icon, and we'll be back next week with another Motherland Fort Salem review. Until then, talk to you all later. Peace out.